Um, thank you very much all for coming here at this, for me, quite early time. Um, my name is Wolfram. I'm the current maintainer of the i 2 c subsystem in Linux. And I want to talk about today about something I learned the hard way when I was uh, preparing my subsystem for proper DMA usage. So, and um, I found a few things out I want to speak about, I want to get known, and I hope you can spread them and we can together raise awareness and hopefully somewhere settle this topic. Because um, if DMA goes wrong in unexpected situ situations, um, you can imagine that it can have quite drastic consequences. So, about I2C and DMA, if some of you say, why would you ever use DMA with I2C, then I'm quite kind of with you. Um, the usual use case is that you send lots of small messages like having a register and a value you want to poke into that register. So, um, when I2C entered Linux long, long ago, DMA wasn't really considered. And um, so there were also no rules how uh, buffers should be. Should they, should they be, should DMA taken be uh, into account when you set up the message buffers? Because, of course, we have inside the struct I2C message, we have a pointer to a buffer where the actual data, data is. And one thing, well, you all know Murphy's Law. If you don't have clear rules uh, and give a chance of things going wrong, things will go wrong in all possible ways you can imagine. When I finally had, when we noticed that they have issues with uh, sending buffers via DMA and found out, well, where do the buffers come from? They really come from everywhere. Heap, stack, read-only data, kmap memory, uh, and whatnot. So, if you, if there's no rules, people go creative and do all this kind of stuff. Um, so, when, when thinking about it more, or trying to get a clear rule, oh, uh, no, here, sorry. Um, with some discussions, after some discussions on the mailing list, I um, thought it would be still best to have a clear rule which says DMA is optional. Um, I don't want, like other subsystems do that, they require their message buffers to be DMA safe. Uh, but I didn't want to go that road uh, uh, for I2C in retro respect for the reasons I've given there. Um, I, I was afraid of regressions because there were like this zillion of drivers getting buffers from everywhere and to which to drivers for hardware where we don't have access to and I didn't want to mass convert that. And um, so um, it was optional. This, the default case is uh, we don't care too much about DMA, but uh, we want to have some guidance if you want to use DMA. And of course, that's why, why I'm here. I want to speak about this, that this is the case so people know and can handle their buffers properly. So great, now I decided that uh, DMA is optional for I2C. Uh, that, but, but that means we have uh, two potential code paths. So we have a buffer which is DMA safe or we don't have. And we need to go in, the, in bus drivers sending out the data to go this or that direction. But how do we decide which direction to go? Uh, ideally, we would do this in a perfect world. We would do this at runtime. We just look at the buffer and say, oh, yeah, that's good. We use DMA. Or no, it's not good. So let's just you pull it out. And yeah, that's the time I, what, and I wondered. Uh, why isn't, isn't there a function for it? Like, is DMA capable for a buffer or what? No? And the, um, the fact that such a function does not exist already, of course, should raise a hint that this is not a very easy topic. And uh, it probably does not exist for a reason. But I wanted to be brave and find out on my own. And just how should a function look like um, if I want to find out at runtime if a buffer is DMA safe. So I started looking what kind of functions we have to check that. And then you find, find like maybe this address and the, uh, this function. 
and then you find out, well, it's not enough, there's, there's a, may, might be a better one, or you should take out into consideration this, or objects might be on the stack that you need to check out as well. And by pointing out this, um, this is what Greg Kroa Hartman, so the USB subsystem also needs to deal with that problem, DMA safe or not, and they have, I think they mainly ch ch used to check with that function, and then somebody said, oh, well, maybe we need to add this check as well. And I don't want to bash Greg, I just want to make out it's really complicated to, or hard to, to know which functions there are inside the kernel. He just thought, oh, I didn't know we had that macro to, to check it. So um, it, it is complicated. And if you think about cache line alignment, then um, this was the point where I said, okay, no, this is not going to fly. I, I understand why there is no such function yet. Um, and this check at runtime, uh, I, I won't go this way. There is this DMA, oh, it's renamed by these days. So uh, I'm sorry, this file name is not correct. It, it has been moved, but it's basically the same. Um, there's a debug uh, kconfig option for DMA, and if you do development, I really, really recommend to, to have it on all the time because it will find a lot of things. It uh, made, it found a bug in a driver for, for Renesis hardware I, I'm looking after, uh, which we could find before it appeared in the field. So it's really good, but um, it's not good for production uh, kernels, of course. So um, you should really do this during development. And so, Okay, I, I should also, I, I, I've um, also talked about it, about this topic in a, on a, in a, at a conference in Japan. So if you see some strike through, this is uh, the information which has changed uh, since this talk. And I think it's quite uh, worth noting that the DMA debug code uh, increased by one kilobyte since uh, this summer. <laughs> so um, it's really it's a delicate topic. So. We have that, but we can't use it for production kernels. It, but it's another idea how, how subtle this and complicated this issue is. So what I did for I2C is I have an opt-in approach. So with, within I2C, the messages can have certain flags, and so I just added a new flag which says, yes, I know this buffer can be handled with DMA. It's called DMA safe. So opt-in, which means that a lot of driver need to be manually audited and added, but uh, I think this is, when you look at regression, this is the same thing to do. And to make it easier for drivers, I have a small API which uh, helps you to, if you want to do DMA, you just use this helper function and the message you want to process, and it will check for you if the buffer is DMA safe based on the flag. And if it's not DMA safe, you get a, a bounce buffer. So that whenever, the, when this function returns and you have a non-null pointer, you have a buffer you can use with DMA and you don't need to care where it comes from. And there's a cleanup um, function for that as well, which as you see got renamed to get the API uh, a little more proper. This is super, still thinking about I2C is super simple. Most of the messages will not require DMA. So this is a one-to-one -one mapping, bounce buffer mapping. If you have, if you're not happy with that, you can do your own um, pool-based approach based on this uh, DMA flag if you want that. But I think for the generic approach, this one-to-one -one mapping is, <coughs> is okay. And <clears throat> on the i client side, we have two new function calls. Um, so the standard function calls uh, to just get and receive data are called i c master receive and send, and now we have that extended with DMA safe. Um, so that um, you, you can use this new flag from, from the client side and have, uh, have all that properly working. It's worth noting that if you use send messages from user space, that we have a user space, a dev interface, um, 
they are all copy, those messages are all copy to, copied from user space to kernel space anyway, and then it's guaranteed that the, those buffers are DMA safe. So happily, we don't need to fix user space. That's that's a good good news. And there are also qu quite a lot used in the kernel are not directly I square C transfers, but SM bus transfers to it's kind of a fallback for more limited hardware. And this I square C controllers emulate these SMBUS calls and all, everything which is emulated will be also DMA safe because there's copying around. So actually most drivers should be okay with this change. There are some which are directly using I2C messages which need to be adapted. As I said, opt-in, uh, every driver needs to be checked. And the bus master drivers need to handle that flag also. The problem with I2C again is that it's uh, not only used directly, but also, well, like RatchMap is a huge user of I2C, especially accessing uh, um, codecs and, and stuff like this. And so I needed to think with Mark Brown um, how he could um, access this new DMA safe functions and. By the way, how handle, I asked him how a rag map handles DMA at all because it doesn't use not only um, I2C but SPI and Slimbus and whatever buses, sometimes buses I've never heard of. And they, what's the common ground of this? And that's what he said, we pretty much assume everything is DMA safe. So it's, it's an assumption, there's also not a clear rule. And, um, how, when saying how, yeah, I can't really think of a particular good way how to handle all this. And what I propose to him doing DMA safe is not particularly appealing, but might be the best we can have. I'm, I'm pretty aware that this is just uh, what I came up with is a solution only for I2C. It's, it's not very generic, but I really want, did want to, well, get this part of the kernel more robust because people were seeing crashes because of that. and. This is what I could come up with in that short amount of time. And he really nailed it when I asked, so should we do it like this? I, I really like this phrase. It's hard to summon enthusiasm, but yes, with our changes to the DMA stuff, it's probably as good as we can do, which is exactly my opinion. So I Im implemented that and I'm happy that we improved the situation, but I I'm not super happy about it because um, what he also later said, we need like annotated buffers. It would be super, super great if we have a, a buffer object or whatever, which could be annotated so we just can check if this one is DMA safe. So I put this on the I2C level, but it should be really on the lower level. But we don't have that yet. And uh, as you can imagine, this is a big task. Yeah, and because RegMap is a user of other subsystems, I checked some <coughs> other subsystems, and they're like, for sure, sure Slimbus, SPMI, and OneWire, which do have buffers. They, they have in the same situation that I2C used to be. They have some structs to pass around messages. These structs have a buffer point, pointer to a buffer, and they have no rules set and nothing is mentioned about uh, the buffers being DMA safe or not. And uh, so it could easily happen that somebody is pointing a buffer which gets someone used with a DMA capable controller and things can go wrong really bad from, from that point. The nasty thing is most, most of the time it will work but when you look from it at a safety pers per, uh, perspective, most of the time is not good enough, clearly not good enough. It needs to work every time. Um, SPI is uh, another subsystem I looked at. It's a lot better given, given the, well, docu documentation side of things because it has clearly documented if, uh, where I said where, follow standard kernel rules and provide DMA safe buffers in your messages. So this is a clear rule. It even has helpers to do the mapping and unmapping. So you could think, great, this is a subsystem, all cases solved, DMA is uh, not an issue for them. But um, I, <laughs> I found a thread where, um, 
there was an issue with doing an UBFS file system on an SPI NOR flash, uh, at, well, obviously connected to the system via SPI. And UBFS, for reasons which I haven't really dug into, but in that message thread were said are okay, use a VMLOC buffers at, at some times. And there's a whole thread how to fix this issue. I, I'm not sure, I haven't checked, followed up, but I'm not sure if it's fixed by now. But there was a lengthy discussion about how to do things properly. So even with these clear rules, there can be still issues. So um, if you... Yeah. Just to note that SpyNor is really completely separate from Spy in the kernel. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, Arn said that uh, SpyNor is completely separate from SPI in the kernel. Um, so that might be that the rule is not affected, but it's still a point in the kernel where the problem I want to point out here is not, maybe not really well handled. And um, well, it could be a root file system which is on it, right? <laughs> and a similar problem, it was, uh, was also with SPI and when to do cache flushing. Um, which also started as a simple patch and turned out into a lengthy discussion how to do this properly. And um, that also showed that sometimes DMA handling is based on assumptions which were mo most work most of the time but not always. And um, it's worth but to be aware of it and then to audit your systems if you're affected or not. The, also, the subtleness of this issue can um, hit people in some unexpected ways. For example, um, if, you, if you get a buffer inside a struct, you pretty, have pretty good chances that you don't meet your uh, cache line alignments. So that is what some people go wrong. So uh, if you get your buffer, just the buffer, uh, the kernel might handle the cache line alignments for you. If you do this inside a struct, you get the memory for the whole struct and the buffer is somewhere in that. You might not have the cache line alignments. This is just the introduction. Some people get this wrong, but some people know this. It gets more subtle if you use defmkmalloc instead of kmalloc because if you get just the buffer, with kmalloc, things will most likely go right. But if you use defmkmalloc, um, you still get this buffer you can use, but internally it gets prepended. It, gets, it is put into a struct as well, um, and the cache line alignments are mostly broken again. So as a rule of thumb, uh, it's pretty good to, if you want to use DMA, capable buffers to not use def mk malloc. And I think this is largely not known. I didn't know that before. It's very subtle, but I think it's a rule of thumb which needs to be told or to, to be fixed. <laughs> or to be fixed. Yeah, and then we have other issues like uh, people work with buffers from stack, which is pretty, I wouldn't say common, but it's not like a no-go because, for example, on ARM, it mostly works like a charm. Um, but even if it works on your architecture, it's definitely architecture dependent. But even on architectures, we could make it work. We have this config vmap stack to for virtualized stack, so uh, that will break for sure. It, that, it doesn't work at all on ARM. It works most of the time, uh, but only when you're not looking. Yes, that's what I said. So. Um, Okay, Arn's, Arn's view on this, it, it doesn't work. Uh, it just works accidentally, but that's what people see. They just do it and it works and so uh, on the driver, so. The, if the, the problem is you get data corruption on your stack randomly in rare cases. You won't notice for a long time and then it breaks. Okay. So you could, well, okay, well, well, I like that. I like roots of thumb. Don't do that. Even on ARM, um, you might get data corruptions on the stack. Um, yeah, and then one other issue is uh, you really have to, 
I put it in brackets, but still, um, rules can be overlooked, ignored by people just hacking around and not, not reading. So um, if you have rules like this, you should really make sure they pop up everywhere and people are aware of that. So how are we doing? Not too bad. Um, so, so my conclusions from trying to get my subsystem proper with DMA and their buffers proper with DMA is, I was kind of shocked <laughs> to see how, how much DMA transfers in the kernel are based on assumptions, which are true, accidentally true or whatnot, but are not really um, rocket proof, uh, yeah. Rocket proof. I don't know. Is that an English word? But you know what I mean. <laughs> um, I have dealt the last month a bit more. So I was in this Sil2 Linux workshop, which deals a lot with safety. And with that interest risen, I think this is a very, uh, this situation is not only bad, but becomes especially bad because um, if you if I see all the devices where Linux should go into, I really want the DMA to be proper because things go wrong horribly if that's not the case. I learned there's no easy way to detect this as run, at runtime yet. The debug option I mentioned, everyone should have that when on when developing to find bugs. It's not good for production production use, so it's current state is it's not really detectable at runtime yet if uh, how what what kind of buffer you have so um we need to audit and be very aware of what what's happening there the good solution is a big task as i as i said already um annotated buffers would be awesome um which m as much handling as possible from core kernel um sub memory subsystems so uh, don't use a don't have much choice to get it wrong. At the last talk, somebody mentioned uh, if the DMA buff from video for Linux could be an option. I didn't check it that time. I checked it a little bit, but I think it's too much design for video for Linux. Uh, I don't think it would be efficient. I, I think efficient would be a really for that targeted solution, which then DMA buff might convert to, to hop onto or so. Some, but I, I don't think DMA buff is a, is a good solution. We need something which is a big task, of course, if you want to do that. I hope I could demonstrate that the problems are, can be very subtle. I think about the K-malloc versus def m k malloc problem, for example, or the fact that um, when I was talking about the UBFS thing, accessing uh, the SPI nor memory, that the UBFS layer can be bring, bring in problems where the SPI nor itself might be okay, so stuff like this. Um, and some of the bugs are pretty long standing. As I said, I don't know if this UBFS problem is actually solved by now. For subsystem maintainers, I really can recommend just write out rules be it whatever DMA, require your buffers to be DMA safe or not, whatever, but just make a rule. Others, as you found out with I2C, things go in all directions. And keep an eye on this during review. So I, sadly, I didn't have, so there's a new subsystem coming, the I3C subsystem. I sadly did not have too much time at looking these patches, but what I said is, hey, you didn't say anything about your DM buffers being DMA, please. Uh, uh, please do that, and they, I think they decided that their buffers should be DMA safe, but it's, it's written out now, so this is a good thing. For developers, I hope I said it at least three times by now, there's config DMA debug when you're developing, please use it. Um, okay, thank you. It's config DMA API debug. Um, like I said, it fixed a problem for me before it turned out in the field uh, where the, the length of the buffer was an, had an off by one bug. And if you're touching code anyhow for whatever reason and it uses DMA, just take these extra minutes to double check that all the DMA related things, especially when it comes to buffers, 
are really proper and not based on assumptions. And yeah, this is for developers and for everyone. Um, <laughs> this is more like also if you think about managers or, or organizations like, let's say, the Linux Foundation. Um, if you care about safety, pay attention about to DMA because this is uh, we're not in a good. In my opinion, the state of that is, given the quality we want to have in the Linux kernel, we're not not good at that. And to do that, we yeah. Spread the word, uh, document what's wrong, and collaborate on how we can fix things. And um, this is a big task. It needs a lot of eyes and a lot of thought. And um, but we want to have. I, I'm quite sure we want to have it. So yeah, this is basically what I wanted to to talk about. Um, I hope you're halfway as shocked as I am. <laughs> Um, if you if you care about uh, good working devices with Linux, um, that's good. We have like ten minutes more for questions. And do we have a mic for that? Or should I, I shall repeat the questions probably, right? Good. Then do we have questions there? So, um, so you were suggesting to you. So there are DMA pooling functions, and your suggestion is to use that kind of those those uh, functions which which access the pool, and so we can have uh, a guarantee that DMA will correctly work. Yeah. Oh. This work, right? no. Can we have that microphone? This one. Ah, there are actually two DMA APIs. What you are referring to is the streaming API where we do explicit cache flushes when we have to. What you asked about is the uh, coherent DMA API with the DMA alloc coherent and so on. These are not compatible. If you use DMA alloc coherent, you get a buffer that is not acceptable to be passed into a driver that expects a buffer to be used with the streaming API. So this is not only uh, not sufficient, it's actually actually wrong. You cannot use this. And and for things like I squared C, uh, accessing uh, all solutions with uh, dealing with pooling, even if you have a custom one, I th we have a tendency that this is uh, over engineered because uh, DMA is rare. So you might, I think. Other questions. Well, if you want to update, you get a microphone. <laughs> so why do you use uh, DMA? Because some hardware allows only easy DMA, easy DMA transfer. Yes. So this is one of the reasons. Yeah. Yeah. In the hardware world, everything is possible. There are indeed D I square C controllers which can only do DMA. Awesome. Mark, you had a question? I'm meeting lots of people, great. <laughs> it's good for your health, this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just on the spine or stuff, it's supposed to be fixed. Um, I don't claim to understand it sufficiently solidly that I'm 100% certain, but it's supposed to be fixed. Uh, the issue is that you can allocate memory with vmalloc as well as other memory allocation functions. And if memory is allocated with vmalloc, you need to map it differently because this is helpful and useful. Uh, but fortunately, you can actually, there's a function you can call to check if a given buffer is vmalloc 
which uh, makes that tractable. But yeah, it's a pain. Yeah. <laughs> One more thing that you, one more trap that you can fall into. So a buffer can be DMA safe for one device, but not for another device, because of the location in physical memory. Some devices have a limited view of the physical address space, um, so you can have a buffer that requires to be in the in a lower address, like within the first four gigabytes, while another device can access data beyond that, or within the first. 24 megabytes, uh, 16 megabytes, or something like that. So, can I lock all so, on? So, there's no generic way to check whether a device, whether a piece of, whether, whether a pointer points to something that is accessible using DMA, unless you also say which device should access it. That, that, I might be confused because I'm on stage, but that would mean we don't have a way in the kernel to get a buffer, which is. Surely DMA safe? <laughs> you, you, we have a way to do that, but you have to pass a pointer to the device structure for this. And which for, for every device, we can get, get a buffer that is accessible by that device if it can do DMA. Which function is that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's complicated. So, <laughs> so that would go back to the DMA alloc. If you, do, if you use the DMA alloc functions, yeah. then you can get a buffer that is accessible by that yeah. device. It is also slow to access from kernel if you don't have cache coherent memory. Yeah. yeah cache coherent DMA. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, just to say that um, I've worked on a couple of spy devices where I've tried to use, uh, make them DMS safe because UBIFF, UBIFS was passing uh, VMLAC buffers. So it turns out that that doesn't work well with VIVT caches, which are there on uh, old ARM platforms. Um, and also on uh, platforms that have LPAE enabled, where mm -hmm. DMA can access only within 32 bits, but with LPA you can access physical memory even at higher address. And uh, yeah, uh, those type of buffers still fail with mm. whatever checks that are there. And <laughs> I don't see any way other than maybe if DMA map single was to somehow provide a bounce buffer, uh, find out whether this is, yeah, yeah. yeah. It does. Okay. So DMA map single, should, uh, if the memory is DMA capable, it will map it, possibly using an IOMMU. If there's no IOMMU and the device is not DMA capable, then it should allocate a bounce buffer. This is currently not fully implemented on ARM32 because nobody has done it. I've <laughs> talked to, <laughs> it's not hard to do. I've talked to a number of people who <laughs> volunteered at some point to do it, but nobody has ever completed. I don't think it's more than a couple of days work actually. <laughs> but un until that is done, you cannot pass a high mem buffer, like a, a buffer beyond the first four gigabyte on the 32-bit ARM system. So this is there for ARM64, um, is it? Not for ARM32, um, that's what I'm saying. The, I mean, DMA map single providing the bounce buffers. It's there for ARM64, um, but not for ARM32. Um, is that what you're saying? That would be correct, yes. On most architectures, it just works, because the architectures either use the software IOTLB, or they are guaranteed to have an IOMMU. On ARM32, we, we, we do not guarantee this at the moment because most people don't have that much memory and it's very rare to actually run into this. I'm so happy that you guys all basically confirm my basic feeling, which is like on most architectures it should work. Like, I, I think this pretty much describes the situation we're in. <laughs> um, yeah, but maybe a good, good no, we still, we still have a few minutes, but uh, it's, it's nice to see in the I2C subsystem that um, bus master drivers are catching up, that they really say, uh, oh, we had this oops because the message buffer came from, uh, I think it came directly from module read-only data because it was a, a firmware. And then they, oh, yeah, okay, cool, you have this flag. And then they could correct things to work. So a bit of success.
Yay. More questions? One, two, three, four. Sold. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs>